Greetings, welcome to a new video about analog filter design. In this example, we will discuss a very interesting combination or comparison. We like to discuss the comparison between the Chepiche response and the Butler response for a design. In this case, we will also use the selling key filter circuits to realize our circuit. Of course, we will see everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in SPI simulations. Okay, our objective is shown here. We like to design an active low pass filter. It should use an selling key filter topology. We also need to calculate then the stop and attenuation of our final design. Now we have the specifications those are shown here. We need to have a maximum pass method ripple of 2 dB. The minimum stop and attenuation we require 35 dB. The cutoff frequency is 500 Hz and the stop and frequency is 1.5 kHz. Again, briefly about these filter specifications. At this frequency of 1.5 kHz, which is the slope band frequency, we need to have an attenuation of 35 dB. So you need to have the gain decrease by at least 35 dB. And at this, uh, and I mean at the at specific frequency, which is called the passment frequency, we need to see a gain reduction of 2 dB. In the Chebyshev response, we will see that there is also a ripple of a band of 2 dB that will be clarified in a minute when we discuss the situation in detail. Okay, let's now calculate the required order. First, that is actually, of course, our first step. And first we start with the Butterworth response. We know what the steps are. We also discussed that in the previous videos. We first start with the Epsilon P, which is related to that A max. And that is then given by this. Just substitute here the 2 dB and you get here 0 0.7648. Epsilon S, which is related to A minimum. Now in a similar form, we just substitute here 35 and you get here 56.225. Now taking this together and substitute in the formula for the low pass, but the response that is the Epsilon S over S Epsilon P in this log and then also the ratio of the stop end frequency and the cutoff frequency and that is all substituted in this formula, you get here 3.9118. Of course, we need to use integer values in order to make the circuit realization. So we need to go for N is 4. And I will now designate this as N stop B, which is referred to that Butterworth. Okay, now we do the same process then for the Chebyshev response. This part is exact same for the Chebyshev response. Of course, we do now 2 dB ripple. That is the Chebyshev characteristic because that is what required here. And all these calculations are again exact same. The only change is, of course, how we calculate the filter order. And that is then done using this formula. You see here the inverse of the cosine hyperbolicus. That is actually, a, yeah, let's say, a special function. And we see again the epsilon s and epsilon p and again the stop band frequency and the cutoff frequency now which if you substitute this in the formula the values exact same values instead of log we use this r cosine h and then you get here 2.8312 which means we need to again go to an integer value if this was for example 2.04 still we need to go to the higher value so it needs to be always rounded up in this case, we need to go for NS3, and I now designate this as C, which is then referred to that Chebyshev. What do we see, by the way? We have exact same specification, but we need to have a lower order. And that is, of course, more easily to the design, and we need to have less components, so it's also uh, less expensive if you want to design, of course, maybe 100 or 200 of these filters, or maybe more. Now, we go now for the step two, which is now the circuit realization. Now, first we start with the Butterworth. In this case, we need to have a fourth order Butterworth uh, filter. So that means the fourth order uh, selling key. We need to have then a cascading of two two-pole selling key low-pass filter circuits. And that's shown here. So the first part here, this is the first part, R1, R2, C1, C2 in the unity gain feedback. That is the first stage. That is a two-pole. Another two pole with this resistor and capacitor again in the unity gain feedback operational amplifier. And for the Chebyshev response, we only need a third order. That means we can use the three pole selling key low pass filter circuit, and that is shown here. So you see directly that we have here six components and one op amp. And for the Butterworth response, we need to have eight components and two operational amplifiers. So you see that this is more expensive. Okay. Let's now bring the situation for the battery response in more detail. 
we like to also calculate the actual component values for this circuit. So R1 up to R4 and also the C1 up to C4. Now we can again set as we did this for the previous videos. All these registers we take uh, the same. So we just select a value, convenient value in this case, let's say one kilo ohm. And then we go for the next step, which is our scaling factor that is then defined as the capital letter C is equal to one over this resistor and then also the cutoff frequency. And in this case, we know the cutoff frequency. Of course, we need to go to the omega C, which is two pi times the F. And then we have here the R, which is then 1000, and then two pi times 500 from the cutoff frequency. And that will result in this 3.1831 times 10 to the power minus seven, approximately this value. And this is a very interesting and important value because now we need to bring up this Butterworth response table and we know that we need the fourth order that's again here and we need to look at the situation where you have a two pole another two pole so for this two pole we need to use these two parameters and this two pole we need to use these two parameters let's now do that in more detail what we mean by that so we have now two two poles so two two poles that means we need to go to the c1 which is actually this and that is then here 1.082 times this capital letter C, which is our scaling factor that is actually shown here. And the C2 is 0 0.9241 times the C, and that's actually shown here. Now, we again, of course, need to write down C1 and C2 because that's actually what the table says. Of course, we go to the second stage, so we can keep uh, with the C3 and C4. And then we need to have here 2.613 times the C that's actually shown here, and the final one is 0 0.3825 times the C. Now we have now our values, that means all the, the, the scaling factor here needs to then also multiply by these values, and you have your actual capacitor values here, and so that's actually what you see here. So one by one, I calculate them here, and you see here they are appearing, so C1 up to C4. So we have now our resistor selected, we calculate our scaling factors, went to the Butterworth response for the fourth order because we have calculated what's fourth order and then use that to calculate the C1 up to C4. And now the design is in, in fact completed for this situation. Now let's also look at the simulation circuit. So this is now done in the Tina Ti SPI simulator. You see here the input resistors, all of them called R, so one kilo ohm. You see here the C1, C2, so they're exact same as here. C3 and C4 also as shown here. So Let's now go to the next step, which is our actual stop and attenuation. So how much do we attenuate now at this 1.5 kilohertz? Now for that, we need to also use the pass band frequency. That is then given by this formula for the low pass filter. Again, we have 500 as the cutoff frequency times epsilon P, which was in our case 0.7648 in the first slide to the power 1 over n, that is 1 over 4, that is actually shown here, that will result in almost 468 hertz. And this is the frequency where you have a gain of minus 2 dB. So you go down from your 0 dB, which is our unit gain feedback, so that means 1, and you go down by 2, so you have a gain at this frequency of minus 2 dB. This will be also verified in the simulation results shortly. Then we can calculate our actual minimum so actual A minimum using this formula, also discussed in the previous videos. Again, we see here the epsilon P, the, F, the FP, which is just calculated, and also our stop pad frequency. And our filter order is also shown here, but we need to double it always to two times the four, which is then eight. So we just substitute everything here, and you get here 38.2 dB, which is indeed larger than the 35 dB we need to have a minimum here. So this is indeed as expected. We can also use in this case the formula where you see the cutoff frequency directly and it goes much faster because then you don't need this passive frequency and you also don't need to use this epsilon p. And that is then given by this formula. You see here directly the stop and frequency, the cutoff frequency and also our filter order. Now when you substitute the values here you get here 38.2 dB again. The same result. Okay. Let's now go to the situation of the Chebyshev response calculations. The same situation, actually, but you need to use a different table, which is then for the Chebyshev 2 dB ripple. That is actually what we need. Again, we need to select some values. In this case, I again start with R1, R2, and R2 equal to each other. 
R3, I mean, equal to each other. So every, well, everything is here one kilo ohm. And I need to again calculate the scaling factor. This is exact same as actually the Butterworth response. So there's no change. So again, the same capital letter C. Now, this table is completely different than the Butterworth response because in the Chebyshev response, we allow for some ripple in the gain plot that will also result in a lower filter order because the filter order we require here is third order. And in the Butterworth response, we need to have a fourth order. Okay, that means we need to go for this row. We see here the three poles, just one section. That's what we see here, so only one section and three pole. And these are the parameters we need to use. Again, C1 over C, C2 over C, and C3 over C. Now let's now go to the uh, values. C1 again, this value times the C, which is then shown here. The next one is this 3.113 times the C. And the final one is then 0 0.03892 times C. Okay, again, we use the scaling factor and also multiply by these values. And we get here our capacitor values, C1 up to C3. And simulation circuit in TNTI spice is then shown here. See again here R1, R2, R3. Again, of course, everything is called R, so 1 kilo ohm. You see here this uh, 8.855 microfarads and the other two capacitors also. Okay, let's also calculate now the actual stop and attenuation for this situation. This goes a little bit different, actually quite different than the Butterworth response situation because the passmet frequency here is related to that cutoff frequency using this again special cosine hyperbolicus functions. You see it again this cosine hyperbolicus function, also the arc cosine of that one, and again the filter order and also this epsilon p. So we have a lot of parameters here we need to substitute. This is of course not what we want to derive here, we just use this formula and then substitute here the 500 and also the 0 0.7648, which is the epsilon p, and our filter order was in this case 3. Now when you do that in the calculator, you get here almost 484 hertz. It's a little bit smaller than this 500. This was also the case for the butter response, so we have this situation. Again, at this frequency, our ripple will stop, and we reach actually our gain of minus a max or minus 2 dB. How do we calculate the A minimum? Again, this is fairly different than the Butterworth response. You see again the stand log, that is exact same again, one plus an epsilon P squared. Then again, you get this uh, expression where you have the cosine hyperbolicus and you get a filter order and also the stop and frequency and the pass band frequency. In this case, we cannot just say, yes, yes uh, just use the cutoff frequency formula. So in this case, we really need to use this passment frequency. Now, when you substitute here the values, we also need to have the passment frequency. We have it here, use, use the here the 1500 for our stop band frequency. N is three, which is our filter order. Now don't forget to square this part. And you have here 38.5 dB. Again, which is larger than the minimum required 35 dB. Okay. Let's go now to the simulation results. This is the body plot. You see here in the red our championship response. You see indeed there is a ripple. The blue one is our Butterworth response, so there is no ripple there. So this is actually nicely done. And we see also here the circuit again, and now we connect this just to one input, and you see here the championship, VOC, which is the championship output, and VOB, which is the Butterworth output. Okay, and these are the performances of our filters, the Butterworth response and the Chepichev 2 dB uh, ripple. The passment frequency was in this case 468 or 67.6 Hz for the Butterworth. That's what you also see here, so you can actually see that here. So I labeled that by B. And you see also for the Chepichev response it was 484.1 Hz and that's actually also shown here. You see indeed that the ripple is starting here and getting some valley and then some peak and then it actually stops here and then goes down. And that is actually the point at this frequency, which is then again minus 2 dB. You can, by the way, calculate these peaks. So at this frequency, 419 Hertz and this 242 Hertz, the valley. I left the details out, but you can calculate that. If you're interested, just let me know. That can be also worked out in detail. Okay, let's go one by one. Our cutoff frequency for both the Chebyshev and the Butterworth response is indeed 500 Hertz here. That is exactly as we wanted, so that is perfect. Now, for the red line and the blue line, you see also at this 
frequency which is 1.5 kilohertz is uh, the situation for Butterworth it was minus 38.1 uh, I mean 2 dB which is also uh, that we have calculated so that's indeed correct and we see for the chip chip it is third minus 38.5 dB again at this same frequency of 1.5 kilohertz now what do we see actually in general we see that we have met all the specifications that is one we also have that we have less components compared to the motherboard response using the chip show and we get actually more attenuation at that frequency and which is actually again um, advantages of using a chip show of course if you don't want this ripple because that's too much you can go for a smaller ripple chip show you can go for example to 1 db or 0.1 db or maybe a different value in order to accept that ripple and if you don't accept any ripple, just 0 dB, 0 dB ripple, then you need to go for a, a Butterworth response filter design. It was our example considering the Butterworth response and the Chepiche response, and we compared the two filter response types, and we have designed our circuit and also looked at how much components we need to use for this specific filter design if you have any questions comments please let me know in the comment section i will try to answer them as soon as possible don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video